OCD has taken over. We don't care if they're organized on Just put them down, everybody. <laughs> All right, you may be seated. All right, we still have lots of boxes coming in. They've got to go back and they're going to continue bringing them in while we have the announcements uh, and everything along those lines. Um, and then we're going to have a word of prayer uh, for them. Uh, we certainly do welcome you. This is our third week of our missions focus. Um, you know, we have really been blessed. We have so many missionaries in our organization that have been represented here. Today we have three more. Our special guest, uh, Larry Matthews, he's here representing the Navigators. Um, I told him I'm not going to steal his thunder and, and tell you anything about the Navigators, but he is going to be speaking during the message time uh, and delivering God's word uh, to us. A um, couple real quick things. Um, as was announced last week, we are still have that open, open offering today for that love offering for the Georgie's family. Um, if you remember, Steve Ackley shared with you, he's the, uh, they're the young family, they have five kids. She is probably, what, eight and a half months pregnant now. The first part of November, she is going to be having a, uh, uh, their sixth child. Uh, he has been in a medically induced coma for six weeks. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just praying for them. We are reaching out to them to help them. They have spent all of their savings. They had, you know, savings to buy a home for the first time. They've gone through everything. And we are going to be reaching out to them in the love of Christ. And if you would like to be part of giving an offering towards them, you just need to designate that as a special type of offering. You can use the envelopes or put that, designate that on your check. And at the end of the service, we're going to let you know uh, what the Lord has done um, along those lines. Um, then also, uh, Men and Ladies next week uh, begins our new ABFs for the men and the ladies. So there are going to be three ABFs. There's still going to be the Seniors ABF. There's going to be the Men's ABF. We're meeting in the Fellowship Hall. We're going to actually be looking at the life of Joseph, starting in Genesis 37 on to the end of the book. But periodically, in between, we're going to be taking lessons on, on fatherhood, on parenting, on some cultural issues, particularly that deal with men. Um, so I hope you're going to be here with us. Uh, that kicks off next week. For the ladies, um, I'm not positive. Martha, what are you guys looking at? Um, we're going to the Bible. The Bible? <laughs> <laughs> she's so spiritual. <laughs> Women of the Bible, <laughs> she's good. they're going to be looking at. They're going to be meeting up in the boardroom. Uh, the stairway is right over in there. If you have any questions about either of those, you can either see my wife or you can see uh, myself. Um, Martha, you have an announcement. You want to go ahead. I do you have an announcement. We had, a, we had a really good ladies retreat. We had eight women go to West Virginia last weekend, and it was gorgeous weather. We had a really good time. A week from Tuesday night, we are having a craft night, and it's kind of a, um, you may bring your projects for the first year's auction if you want to work on it, or I will have wax there if you want to buy more of the soy wax. I have some extra. Or you can make the wax candles, and we will be making homemade soap. So it's at our house, and it's at 6 o'clock a week from Tuesday. So come on out and have fun with us. All righty. Okay, I'm going to give you guys another chance to win one of our T-shirts. Okay? So um, we got a quiz. I've got at least five T-shirts to give away here. So don't blurt the answer out. you got to raise your hand and blurt the answer out. You're just giving it to somebody else to get your T-shirt. You know, I know these are very precious to you here. So Anyway, all righty. Number one, what is our mission theme? Yes? Across three around the world. Okay, but to get the shirt, you have to tell us, what does that mean? Why do we have that as a thing? What are we trying to, just, come on, Ryan. What are we trying to say? We're helping our neighbors. Okay, and? Second part around the world. Yes, missions isn't just overseas. Missions is also local. And that's why we have, okay, I'm going to guess that you are a large. All right. Okay, second question. What is? A faith promise. Yes, that. Money that you promise that you don't know if you will get or not. Okay, all right, good, that's part of it. All right, a faith promise is a step of faith that you're going to be taking, that you feel God has led you. It's not that you have it already, but you're trusting that God is going to provide this in the next year towards missions. And that's how we do our missions awareness and our missions uh, we determine our missions budget for 2018. Um, coming off of next week, the last uh, Sunday of our missions awareness, we're going to start focusing on our faith promises uh, throughout the services. And so we want you to be in prayer about that. To say, Lord, what is it that, that you can touch me in faith that I can step out? We're not asking you to just shift your giving from one place to the other. We're just saying, I'm going to take the step of faith. 
And that, God, you're going to provide over and above what I already give in a very special way to provide for missions. And we only want you to do what God leads you to do. We don't mean to do it just, well, I'm going to you know, give this amount. And um, we, we, If God leads you, God tells you to give, God will provide it. And that's how we determine whether or not we're able to take on additional missionaries or not. As the faith promises go up, then we're able to uh, take on additional missionaries. All righty. I'm going to guess you are, I don't know what you are. Got a Rex? There we go. Okay, here we are. Who has been our mission chair for the past two years, or two or more years? You have a t-shirt. Uh, who, who else? Anyone? Ashley in the back. Ashley, I just in the back. Okay, Ashley, who? Lauren. Lauren. Lauren Jackson has been. She is actually going to be stepping down. I think she's still going to be involved in the missions. But here you go. Somebody catch that. There we go. Yeah. Good hands there, Nate. <laughs> he used to play rugby. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to love this one. You won't understand this if you weren't here last week. But how tall is Nathan Marshall? This is a multiple choice. <laughs> is he four foot six? <laughs> Five foot four or six foot four? Caleb? Six foot four. Six foot four. How tall was he in the video last week? Five foot four. No, he was about four foot six last week. <laughs> if, you were, if you were here, uh, it was, it was kind of humorous. Uh, I can't get back there. All right, let's do the dog relay here. Okay, and then the pass back there. Okay. All right, this is our last one. Of our present missionaries, who has been connected to Colonial the longest? Of the missionaries we already have, Krista. The Midas. How long have they been here? You have any idea? What's that? That's the bonus question. <laughs> Take a guess. They have been here, I think, I know they've been at least 35 years. Um, somebody... 1987. 1980. started supporting. In 1987, we started supporting. So we're looking at, yeah, it's been 40 years that we've been part of Joe and Nanny That was evangelically speaking. <laughs> that was embellished the number of stuff. All righty. Guys, um, you know, this morning, I, I hope you had the chance to come out for the breakfast and then to be uh, part of the pack. This is the first time we've ever done it like this. We've had you do the individual boxes. And just so you know, that is still available for you, too. Hopefully, it's not going to be as distorted. Um, they sit in a different format, so hopefully it's going to work better. Um, but we are going to, I, the words were very nice and sent us a video um, from the Dominican Republic about how their ministry is going there. Hello, Colonial Baptists. We're very thankful for your partnership in the gospel with us, for praying for us, and also for supporting us financially. If any of you do not know us, I'm Jeremy. This is my wife, Amy, and our little uh, daughter, Olivia. She's almost 21 months old. We also have another little baby on the way. His name is Elliot, and Amy is due around mid-February, so we're very excited about that. I'll let Amy tell you a little bit about Olivia's health and also about her cultural adaptation. So some of you may remember that Olivia had some health complications when she was born due to a virus. And we praise God that we haven't seen any negative side effects from those. Her hearing and her vision, which were two concerns, seem to be um, healthy. And um, she seems to be developing normally. So we praise God for that, and we'll just keep monitoring it and trusting God's sovereignty in her life. Some of you may have wondered um, how the hurricanes, uh, Maria, Irma and Maria, affected us since they did cause great devastation um, around us. But we live in an area of the island that's rarely hit directly by hurricanes, so the effects were minimal in our area. So we're, we were relieved and thankful for that. Um, we've been here a little over a year now. It's hard to believe how fast time has flown by. Um, so we knew the language. We're, we were both fluent, and that has helped us immensely. But it's, it's been a learning process, sorry, no? uh, figuring out um, what people might mean when they say something, their expressions.
expressions, the words that they use, they aren't always what we think they mean. And so we've been learning that and we still continue to learn. Uh, for me personally, and I think Jeremy would say the same, it's been humbling as well because you assume something to be true and then it isn't. And so I'm learning to listen, to not assume, to not judge based on my first impression of something that happens, but to, to really humble myself and learn from a situation and know that I can learn from them, that my way isn't necessarily better than theirs just because I'm used to my way. So that's not something I've learned yet. It's a process, but we're thankful for the work that God is doing in our hearts through the cultural adaptation process. Some challenges are the weather. Personally, it's we like hot weather, but it's really hot here. And so sometimes it's frustrating and you just have to get try to get used to it and to thank God for where we are and where he's placed us. I like the weather. <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer hot and cold, but it's it's just hard sometimes. And um, organization, the time perception that people have here, that has been hard for us to adjust to. Uh, just some specific examples, going to the doctor here, um, you can you should plan for your whole day to involve that. Um, waiting on the doctor, there's no appointment, so it's first come, first serve. You might not see the doctor that day even. Um, everything, uh, you have to get a blood test at somewhere else on a different day. It's just such a different um, setup here, and that has been hard for us to adjust to. And um, for example, getting a, a bank account set up, I think we went to the bank about 10 times. Over, over a month. Yes, uh, getting a driver's license, we went, Jeremy had to go like 13 times to the capital, which is an hour away. So, and, and we're foreigners, so they make it harder for us. Um, just honestly to get more money out of us sometimes. And so, tr trying to be patient through that and stay calm and trust God and not get upset, it's, it's been good for us, learning patience in those areas. Um, for me personally, my ministry here is mostly in the home, and that's, I feel strongly about that. My family and home is our, my main ministry, and I, and I consider it a privilege to be able to take care of Jeremy and um, Olivia and the child on the way, and then using our home as a place to invite people, to get to know people from the church, I forgot to mention the church earlier. We have been so blessed by the the people in our church, how they've accepted us, how they've loved us. They are a blessing, and we become good friends with them. And I'm discipling a new believer right now. I was um, asked to start a nursery ministry in the church, so I enjoy doing that. And then I'm also involved in the music ministry in the church. So that's briefly what my main um, jobs or ministries out here, and so I'll let Jeremy take over uh, talking about the seminary. Thank you. So my ministry, uh, yeah, that's, of course, the seminary is the main part of that, but I also uh, teach the men's Sunday school here, and I preach about once a month in church. Uh, as far as the seminary is concerned, I teach, but my main role is directing the seminary. When I say seminary, uh, here in the Latin world, Bible Institute is called a seminary, a seminary is called a seminary, a Bible college is called a seminary, so we, we mean a Bible college. Um, I've taught in the winter semester, uh, taught biblical counseling, then in the summer I've taught uh, as a fam Christian family, and now I'm teaching a class on hermeneutics, so I enjoy that. Uh, with regards to what has happened when we came in, uh, they, as we had shared with you as well, they had asked us to establish a university level of training uh, to train nationals, uh, mainly pastors, and so we did that. Before we came here, and I think it's about, it had been there for 10 years, the prior Bible Institute, there were two pastors who were teaching uh, an institute level they have an institute level degree themselves. And it was just here in Lahamana 
uh, the institute belonged to the association of churches that we serve along the side of the 30 churches, but uh, due to it being in one location, it only reached about, I'd say, maybe 10 churches that were willing to travel this distance. So we changed that, we augmented the teaching level. We now have, by God's grace, also more churches. We actually have about 60 churches that participate in the effort. So 60 churches, uh, nine teachers who have master's degrees, seven of them are nationals. And uh, we, so we offer two undergraduate degrees and uh, two institute level programs and one teaching. And really, we just have a, or we have a lot fewer classes in the institute programs, and the requirements are, are much easier. And right now, so we've gone from these teachers, those programs, and also from the uh, one location to having five different locations, and we're doing that through teaching uh, live classes. So let's say I'm teaching here in Matamana. It's reproduced online live in the four other cities. And that's uh, Saturday evenings from 6 to 9 p.m. But then prior to that, on Saturdays from 2 to 5, we have another class that is taught in another city, but it's still reproduced online live on the other campuses. And so the teachers see the students, students see the teachers, or more so the, the screen that he shares with his PowerPoint. And so that's how we're doing it. The turnout so far, we have roughly 40 students. Uh, they're not all uh, pastoral students, or they're not all men who are in the pastorate or wanting to become pastors, but uh, that's still our focus. That's the main reason why we're here. But we're also training uh, ladies and uh, we're training basically people who want to become pastors and pastors and those who don't necessarily want uh, to become pastors, whether they're ladies or other men. We're very excited to uh, see this come to fruition. And while just starting the, the project, we've been raising funds to come here to the Dominican and also uh, been planning to start. So how this all happened, well, uh, in January, there was a big meeting. The MM People Baptist Missions sent came with a few administrators and they kind of officially turned things over to me in front of the Dominican leaders. And since then, we've been planning, talking about the mission and vision of the school, uh, the doctrine, different important aspects, and now it's come to fruition. And so there's still a lot of fine tuning that's necessary, but we're very excited about uh, having started. We're very thankful for your, for your support again. Thank you for your prayers. And uh, if anyone wants to receive our prayer updates and are not receiving, receiving them, my email is jeremy-roy at hotmail.com and Jeremy ending in I-E instead of Y. Thank you very much.
it's just part of like our extended family. We rejoice at that and we care for them, and you know, excited for you know for their next child to come, and giving you praise for the way Olivia is doing, Father, and uh, that you know every you know, side effects from from early illness. And I just pray that you will continue to open up doors of opportunity for them at the university as they're to train and equip and that more and more pastors and, and, and young people to become pastors will, will en enroll and enlist. And we thank you that already, you know, fivefold, Lord, of what they started with has multiplied. And this year to come, we look for many more testimonies like this. But just bless them now, Lord, you know, in the midst of their, in the times that maybe that they're lonely and missing, you know, family, you know, just the things of the United States, and uh, just just give them your special blessing and comfort um, at that time, and, and just raise up them such a ministry in their midst, Father, that, you know, that, that any sacrifices they make would just pay Lord, in comparison. And Lord, I, I pray for, I pray for any here, Lord, you know, you're working in our lives, and you know, you're calling us as well to be missionaries, whether it's across the street, you know, to tell our neighbor to, to go and help in the local ministries, to serve here in, in this church family, whatever it might be. Or, Father, even there might be some here that are hearing your call to go around the world. Um, Father, you know, we just, we never want to, we never want to dampen your will for our life. And so just help us all to be receptive of that eager, Lord, to fulfill that calling that you have given us. Now, Lord, I, I ask you to just reveal yourself to us through the rest of the service. We lift up our voices. We lift up the, the truth of these psalms to you, Lord, to worship you. And just be, the, be here in our midst, Father, as we worship. In thy name we pray. Amen.
It was a wonderful time of fellowship. We learned a lot about uh, seeking your identity in Christ and not your identity in the world. So it was a great time, really enjoyable time. We'll probably do another one two years, three years down the road. Um, but it was, it was a really, really good time. So uh, just thank you for your prayers and your support during that. Um, again, Wednesday night went wonderful with the truck retreat. It was awesome. I don't know if any of you are, who was it here and who was not because I was kind of running around doing everything. But we had a really good time. We had around 50, I think 50, uh, Awana Clubbers, 55, Caleb saying higher. So uh, we're 50, 55, 60, 70, 80, however how you want to take it in your mind, you can, you can take it that far. But we had a really good group, a really good time. And again, the gospel was shared that night through verses. So each time they're meeting, they're not just here for the games and the, the playtime. They are getting the gospel of Jesus Christ. So again, thank you for your prayers and support and everything the church does. We'll go ahead and dismiss the children for Children's Church. And all one got up. They're all tired from the breakfast. They, they ate and ready to take a nap now. We'll go ahead and have our ushers come forward for the offering. We'll go ahead and bow for a word of prayer as the ushers come forward. Father God in heaven, we just thank you so much for this wonderful day. God, just thank you for the, the missions that we're hearing about the, the church supports. God, and we just thank you that your word is, is being spread. God, and we just thank you for being for allowing us to be a small part in this. God, we just thank you again for the Operation Christmas Child as well. God, we thank you for uh, uh, that wonderful mission as well. And just thank you for allowing us to, to have a small part in that as well. God, just thank you this time that you allowed us to, to give back some of what you've given to us, God. We just pray that uh, as we give, you'll bless those who can give, God, and bless those who are not able to give as well this morning, Lord. We just uh, pray that this will uh, go to your glory, your honor, Lord. We pray those things in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. There's a call going out across the land
There is a war raging against women, and time takes on while rivers of tears run as a hidden gender side sweeps the globe. At War International, we unveil what's hidden and reclaim what's beautiful. Yet our war has victims disguised as statistics like the 800,000 people illegally trafficked across borders in the 365 days of our year. Half are children. While 70% of trafficked women end up as sexual slaves, chained to beds of horror. In the United States, human trafficking is the fastest growing organized crime. The FBI estimates that 100,000 to 300,000 children are missing. 300 children are sold in Atlanta, Georgia each month. All around our beautiful creation, newborn babies are purchased for $25. Every 15 seconds in one city alone, a girl is brutally circumcised, while honor killings and acid attacks are disguised as accidents. Fear strikes women around the world, haunted by domestic violence and rape. In total, every two to four years, 114 to 200 million women go demographically missing from all manners of risk. At Women at Risk International, we know God sees our suffering and weeps. We're fighting against 14 high-risk issues in many different countries. We give voice to those who have been silenced and a new life to live. One desperate mother sold her two-week-old daughter into slavery for $200. Action was taken immediately, and this baby was rescued from her captors. Today, she is safe, adopted, and protected by a loving family. This precious baby is a living, breathing example of hope. We have lifted hundreds of at-risk children and orphans who are now protected. Every missing woman has a story. Through War International, you have the power to help women be rescued from slavery, redeemed by love. Restored to circles of protection, empowered to work with dignity, and unveiled. How will you respond? Perhaps as simple as hosting a war chest jewelry party, offering international gifts handcrafted by rescued and at-risk women. Shopping for these products will help women regain lives of dignity. Together, we will wrap arms of love and whisper words back into the hearts and lives of millions. You have the power to help us exchange tears of sorrow for tears of joy. Join us in spreading the message of hope. Visit warinternational.org. she was 14 years old, her best friend was resisting rape and she had acid poured down her throat and that quite literally burned a hole in her, but it burned a hole in Becky's heart for at-risk women. So that is where war was started and it was initially or originally founded in, I'm going to keep looking at my years here, 2006. <coughs> At that time, 
time they didn't even have a storefront. Women were volunteering and selling it out of their homes. <clears throat> you saw that jewelry. I'm going to be all over the place because there's so much information. I couldn't decide. I was telling my husband last night. I don't know what to share because there's just so much. Um, and then this is all in Michigan. And, and they founded their first store in 2008 in Rockford, Michigan. This is a storefront where they sell jewelry. And it is created by women who have been rescued and restored and redeemed. <laughs> They sell other items just to support the ministry, and that all goes to the most needed locations. They, they have a multifaceted approach to rescue. There are so many different ways that they're involved. They're involved with so many partners in so many countries. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing, and I'm going to show you this. There are a few of these on the Welcome Center. They have the web address. I challenge you, if you are interested in this ministry, grab one of these, check out the website. They have so many stories. These women on the PowerPoint up here each have their individual story on the website. Go and read. I challenge you to get involved personally, but you know, thank God through our faith promise, we are able to support them as a church. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Don't be like a horse or a mule that have no understanding, that must be kept with bit and bridle or they won't come with you. What a privilege it is to serve a God who's promised to instruct and teach us, to guide us in the way we should go. And how gracious God has been to us as navigators to give us our core, our calling, values, and vision to instruct us in the way we should go together as navigators. And in thinking about our calling, there are two illustrations that have helped me that I would like to just share with you. The first is to think of our calling as an hourglass. At either end of our calling statement is the huge breadth and challenge of what God has called us to the advance of the gospel into the nations, the lost in the nations that are on God's heart and that drive us forward with his love and with the good news. But at the heart of our calling statement is this narrow focus that God has given us specifically as navigators to contribute to the advance of the gospel through spiritual generations of laborers. Right from the birth of our navigator movement with Dawes and those first few sailors, there was a focus on helping men and women become laborers, workers for the kingdom. People who would be mature in Christ, reproducing reproducers, is how Dawes and Trotman expressed this idea. And today still, God is calling us to contribute to the Great Commission through this focus that he's given us of helping people become laborers in a generational way so that their lives impact the lives of others in a multiplying way. Another way of thinking about our calling is to think of it as a string of pearls, great Bible ideas that God has threaded together for us in our calling. The gospel, Jesus, his kingdom, the nations, generations, laborers, discipling, the lost. These are all great themes of Scripture. And if we as navigators are going to fully grasp what God is calling us to, we've got to get into the Bible and understand each of these things. In Galatians 3, God says of Abraham that he preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham. The gospel is something that reaches back 4,000 years. And as we advance the gospel, we need to enter into the fullness of what God means in the scriptures when he gives us the gospel. Each one of these things is a great theme of scripture then that we need to understand and embrace 
in order to understand the fullness of our calling. So let me urge us all as navigators to take our calling seriously, to get into the Bible together on these great themes, to stay focused on believing him for these spiritual generations of laborers, laborers who will live and disciple among the lost in the nations. is an international ministry of discipleship and evangelism where our calling has been to raise up lifetime laborers. Uh, we're located in over 100 countries that reflect over 110 languages. And the motto for the navigators is to know, to know Christ and to make him known. And the navigators serve on college campuses in the inner city amongst racial and ethnic minorities, business and professionals, and on, on a military basis. It was uh, almost 30 plus years ago that I was a high school teacher in Austin, Texas, uh, leading a ministry on a college campus when the navigators asked me if I would minister to the military. My father was in the military, so I thought that was his job. My interest was pretty low. But it would entail moving from Austin, Texas to California for five years of training. And I thought, I'm single, I'm in Austin, California sounds pretty good. <laughs> and so I left for California, and it was a time of learning to work with chaplains and how to lead a base ministry and develop leaders amongst military personnel. Julie and I disciple men and women in a life, in a life fashion, life on life fashion, in small groups and Bible studies. And our efforts are geared to help train and develop military ministry skills in people. 2 Timothy 2.2 speaks of Paul exhorting Timothy that whatever he heard from Paul, that he was to instruct others so that they could also instruct others also. We call that spiritual generations. In our, and that is the heart of our ministry is to uh, raise up generations of lifelong laborers in the military context and beyond. Several years ago, we were asked by a church to validate our ministry uh, for their support. They were moving to a 1040 window mentality. And we were living in Germany at the time. And so we came back to the States and explained our ministry. And what I found interesting was that we could locate military disciples in 15, 1040 uh, countries. And I hadn't really thought about that, but God had raised up uh, men and women in the military and even who got out of the military to minister in the 1040 window. Our current efforts are concentrated here in Dayton with ROTC students at Wright State, Cedarville University, and the University of Dayton as well as Wright Patterson Air Force Base. With each person that we are ministering to, we're hoping to help them impact their sphere of influence. Jesus told the disciples that they were to be salt and light. I believe that each person is placed in the context of relationships that God intends for them to influence. That means that you are placed in a context of relationships where you live, where you work, or you play, where God intends for you to influence people for the sake of the gospel. And so we're asking, and we're asking our students to pray for their top 10 most wanted list, just like in the post office, except 
We'll even sell for just three people. Pray for three people that you want to see come to Christ or move closer in their walk with God. I asked that of Jason last winter. Jason is in the ROTC detachment at Wright State. And he has friends of Drew, James, and Chris. Three non-Christians, but they're all friends. And the interesting thing about this generation today is that friendship is really important. Because friends support one another. Friends can share with one another. And friends don't judge one another. So being a Christian in this particular culture with your, with your friends is not the end of the world. And so I asked uh, Jason, would you, in, would you invite these guys to read the Bible with you? Not a Bible study, just to open the Bible and read it. And he thought, and he went home that uh, Christmas break when he came back after Christmas break, he said, I'll do it. Now, he, so he talked to James first. He asked James, would you like to read the Bible with me? And James said, you bet. <laughs> and Jason took a step backwards. He, he wasn't expecting an enthusiastic response. He thought, maybe, I don't know, who says, whatever. But James said, yes. And then Chris and Drew and as it turned out over the next few weeks, on Friday afternoons and evenings, they would get together and just walk through a half a chapter or a chapter of the Gospel of John. And then it happens one early Tuesday morning when they get together for PT at 6 o'clock in the morning. Chris comes up to Jason and says, we need, to, we need to invite our other friends. We need to invite other people into this. I think other people would be interested in this. That, I guarantee you, Jason never anticipated. But we're asking not only Jason to reach into his friendships, Tyler is praying for Connor, a UD student. Rachel is praying for the girls in the ROCT, ROC, ROTC detachment. We want to see students learn how to gauge the spiritual awareness of their friends and then have meaningful and relevant conversations. We are helping these students to be a safe place for their friends. And as I said, friendship is really important. I use a phrase uh, quite often that it's important for us to build a bridge of trust to bear the weight of truth. And when you have safe relationships, you have an opportunity to share the truth of the gospel with your friends. As we minister to students who become military personnel, we know that they have an opportunity to export the gospel around the world. I want to speak of Andy, who was in the, in the army in Germany. And Andy uh, started a ministry amongst Muslims in, uh, in Germany where we lived. And he learned the Arabic language. And when he finished his commitment to the military, he asked different mission organizations if he could join them. But this was 1997, and for some reason, they were not taking new missionaries, especially young 26-year-olds. Andy was kind of heart uh, heartbroken. So reluctantly, Andy signed up with a headhunter to get a job. And that's what military young officers can do. They can join, they can sign up with a headhunter and they'll find a good job like for managers or middle, middle management. So Andy got a job with General Electric to work on locomotives in Egypt. Andy wanted to minister amongst Muslims but he didn't expect General Electric to, to pay him an exorbitant salary, teach him, take him to language training, and send him to Egypt for five years. But he got there. And then there's an F-15 pilot we call Pops.
cops had a heart for people. He wanted to be a missionary too. But all he could do was have the military train him up to be a defense attache in Oman and Jordan. Uncle Sam is a great mission organization. And so we are happy to be a part of sending and raising up missionaries around the world. And, and right now, Julie and I are praying for young men and women in Afghanistan, Germany, Japan, South Korea. And just a couple weeks ago, we said goodbye to a dear friend of ours who's going to be the defense attache in Burundi, Africa. You know, our hope is that they will become laborers to people next door everywhere. You know, 32 years ago, I did not know that I would be impacting the lives of men and women in the course of a lifetime. I wasn't thinking of them retiring as master sergeants or colonels, but that's what it's been. An adventure of seeing God transform the lives of people by helping them to know Christ and to make Him known. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, baby. Um, John, can you go get a few? Your wife is supposed to have something for me for the end of the service here, so if you can go ahead and get that. Um, you know, if you notice in the bulletin, um, I did not uh, pick a closing or a closing hymn. I gotta tell you, I just, I, yeah, I just felt God was going to do something. I wasn't sure, and God wasn't leading me to any particular song. Uh, but you know, I, I've been sitting here for this is the third week, and, and ministry after ministry after ministry has come before us that, that we have hands-on connection with. And folks, it's overwhelming. You know the need that is out there, the the difference that we make through our faith promises and through our giving and through uh, attaching to these ministries and to the individuals for the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I sat there during, you know, during the Women at Risk and I just, I'm just overwhelmed. You know, I mean, this is a ministry going into the, the belly of the beast, folks. A place where you and I don't want to go. And they're making a difference for Christ and the safe harbor house and pregnancy resource and you know listen to the navigators this morning. I mean, isn't that the heart of what we felt that God has called us to do? To to be involved with ministries that are sending others to go and minister and to do the training up and, and uh, so I, I appreciate you know the, the sharing with us, us, Larry, and what you have been uh, you know doing and the Lord has been doing in this area and look forward to you know as, as God leads you know having a partnership. Uh, with you together, um, I got to tell you, tell you something that you know, as a pastor, I'm just. Well, yeah, can you bring it up here? <laughs> Thank you. I know you like being in the public eye. Thank you. Okay. You know, I, I felt God was going to do something, and you know, last week, you know, we we put out the need for the George's family. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, and, you know, I, I love what Steve said that, you know, that there was really, you know, for this family, there's really nothing in it for us. Okay, take that correctly. I mean, this is a family we have no connection to. You know, we're, you know, they're, they're believers already. They're plugged into a church in Florida. You know, they're not going to be coming here and, and, and you know, becoming part of our body. But they have a need. And we, and we put that need out. Um, and if you remember, the pregnancy resource son was here last week, Ellen Dundee and her husband, uh, Jeremy, were here, um, and they heard that. And this morning I came into my office with a letter on my desk, and they had sent a significant check for that ministry to be part of that. I just thought, I mean, that's it. That's the body of Christ. And that's something that we're called to be a part of. And, and I want to tell you, um, I, I had Carol, I told her I wanted her to give me um, to get me what the final offering was and what we're going to be able to send. And I had to praise God that the, the total that we're going to be able to send to this family is $3,167. Mm -hmm. 
Can you even imagine, you know, this family at this time, what they're going through, and the difference that that's going to make for them? So I'm going to invite you, we're going to just close the service by thanking God. And, and maybe closing with that song, you know, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. So when you stand together with me, let's first sing that song, and then I'll close us in prayer. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join us with Jesus as we travel. so much bigger than ourselves, so much bigger than this world and all of its problems and all of the darkness. Father, something that is going to reach into eternity and lay up treasure, souls for Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, for being able to just be, whether it's a, a minuscule part of that. God, there's so much, as I pray so often, there's so much in my life that I'm part of that is just so routine and so cycles that we have to do. But God, what a blessing to be able to step out in faith and be used of you and our, and our faith promises and our missionaries and to reach across the street and around the world. And now with this George's family, I pray for them right now. Lord, I pray that as they receive this gift, Father, they will so feel the love of Jesus Christ that once again that we will be removed out of the equation and they will see this as a Jesus moment in their life. And you have not left them, you have not forsaken them. And uh, Lord, I just pray for his healing. God, it is going to take a miracle for him to, this, this brain cancer to be taken away. But God, you are the God of miracles. Um, I thank you, Father, that you, they, their whole family is in your hands. And we just, God, we look to hear, you know, how you are, how you are continuing to move there. Father, I dismiss us with your grace and your mercy upon us. We thank you in thy son's name we pray.